Welcome to the Solid Oak Technologies Cover All Design Intent Capture Video. During this demo, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to capture design intent in the form of a finite state machine diagram. In addition, I'll demonstrate how to generate the assertions and sequences required for assertion based verification. Finally, I'll demonstrate how to generate a RTL module from the same FSM diagram. We start by opening a blank drawing in Microsoft Visio. A blank drawing is utilized since it contains no unwanted Visio properties. I prefer to design in the landscape mode, so I'm going to switch to that right now. So as with all Visio documents, you got you have to have um, a shape library to create the, di the, the diagrams from. So I'm going to open, show you, and then open some of the uh, coverall shape libraries. Coverall comes with three libraries. The coverall lib, which I'm going to open right now. As you can see, there's a number of masters in here. This is basically a high-level macro type library. And for our particular design today of an FSM, um, we're going to need two of these macro, the reset state macro and the next state macro. In addition, we're going to need one other of the coverall libraries, and that's the flowchart to assert. We're going to use this library for uh, title pages and for our output diagrams. The final uh, coverall stencil is the timing diagram to assert stencil. We're not going to use that today. So let's open that flowchart to assert. As with all coverall diagrams, the first thing you have to do is add a title page. So I'm going to do that now. And we're going to be generating system barrel logs assertion. So I'm going to put the system barrel log assertion file type here. All caps. And I'm going to name this particular file, the assertion file, FSM demo.1. And then the RTL file name, when we generate that later, will be called FSM demo as well. Okay, we need one option here because we're creating a finite state machine. We need to tell Coverall what the finite state machine variable is. And you do that with the keyword FSM bar and set that equal to, to the state variable. And in this case, I'm just going to use state. Okay, let's go back and look at. Um, our functional library and every state machine has a reset state so I'm going to place that right now. And one thing you'll notice is that these are actually group blocks and we need to ungroup them so we can go here and ungroup and Visio is going to give us this telling us that we're unlinking it back to this master but that's okay we care about the masters that are underneath this. Okay so there's our reset. Um, now would be a good time to kind of explain what I'm going to show in this demo. So what I want to create is a, is a state machine that's basically a counter. It's going to be a 2-bit counter. It's going to count up and it's going to count down. And that's going to be the, the total functionality of it. So we're really going to need four states. So I've placed the reset state. So I'm going to go ahead and place the other three states real quickly and ungroup them as I do that. Okay, so we have our basic four state state machine now. And what I want to do is, since this is a counter, I'm going to change each of the state names to a representative name. So I got count zero. Oops, extra character there. Bring that up. Count zero, count one, this will be count two. And finally, count. Okay, one of the things you have to do with all diagrams within uh, Coverall is when you, when you declare a variable in the reset um, state, you have to give a width parameter to that so Coverall knows that that is not a single bit um, a single bit quantity. So right now, I've, since I have four states here, I'm going to define a state variable that's two bits wide. Okay, notice the terminator block here. This is what um, Coverall um, uses to indicate clocks, resets, things like that, and also when you, when you tie a um, 
dynamic connector from a terminator to a to a process block here um, it tells cover all that this is your reset state so as you can see there's a there's some text in here and that's indicating a synchronous reset and we're not going to use that so I'm going to get rid of that for now we're going to go ahead and use this clock and asynchronous reset um, definition that was placed here on the inside the macro so as I said before this is going to be an up down counter so I'm going to add two signals here on the reset state that shows that what we do during up and what we do during down so what, what's going to happen here is when we're in state count zero if we see an up signal we're going to transfer out to, to um, state two here which is represented by this state count one and if we get it down we're going to um, jump out to state three which in this case is not correct yet because these all have the same label so we want to change these label so this will be state three and this will now be state four so now we have unique labels in front of each of the states. So we can go ahead and add up and down to each of these other conditions. All right, so each of our states has the uh, decision blocks that tell us what to do. Hit up and down. So now we have to make sure our transition is correct. So let's follow the up path. So if we're in state count zero, we get an up, we're going to go to two, which is this um, state here, count one. If we get an up, it says we're going to go to three, which is this state. And if we get an up here, we're, we, it says three, but we really should go to four, so we're going to change that one to four. Okay, and if we get an up in count three, we actually want to go back to this state, so we're going to put a one in there. So this counter rolls over zero uh, from three to zero and from um, zero from from uh, three back to zero and once it and once it goes one two three it's going to follow that path again in the up state in the down state it's going to go from count zero back to count three and then count two and then count three and then back to count zero okay so let's look at the down state if we're in down here actually we want to go back to four state four if we're in the down condition here, we actually want to go back to one and so on. This one could be two and this one could be three. Okay, so we have our our states uh, state diagram set up. And this is the complete state diagram. We can go ahead and process this and cover all now and see what kind of assertions we're going to get generated for for this particular state machine. Uh, the last thing we need to do, cover all requires um, page titles to be lowercase underscore and uh, numeric so I'm gonna I'm gonna call this page FS demo one so I'm gonna go ahead and invoke coverall we invoke coverall as an add-on to um, Visio and so I'm gonna grab that there and you can see coverall shows up in the menu and it's actually a shell uh, application so I'm gonna go ahead and run it and here the GUI popped up so I'm gonna pull the GUI up here so you can see it and then for this first part of the demo, I'm not going to generate any of the RTL bind modules test bits. I'm just going to generate and show you the assertions. The other thing you need to look at is right here in these these two text areas, um, Coverall is expecting a log file and an output directory description. So for the, for this case, I put everything in the test FSM directory on my C drive, and uh, I've called this log file coverall.log, and then I've told it my output directory is going to that same test FSM directory. And you can see this little graphic right here. This tells Coverall uh, that we're going to put some, um, assertions in the search directory. Any RTL we create in the RTL directory, any verification uh, files in the verif directory, and formal scripts go in the formal. So why don't we go ahead and um, run Coverall, and then I'll explain to you what uh, what's happening in these other So this pop-up comes up, and it, it warns you that you're about to overwrite some assertion files. And uh, because I've run this before, these these assertion files for this design are already here, and I'm just going to tell it to overwrite all of them. All right, so coverall's done. It's it's created the assertion file for this particular drawing. And down here, this is the console um, for coverall, and it basically shows you what it's doing as it's running. Um, it's it's talking about um, you know the operations that it goes through to create these assertions, and, and basically at the end gives you um, a 
count of errors warnings and info and I'll show you the info here on the info pane you you know um, down here at cover I was giving you some information about what it just did things like it tells you you have naysayers reset a clock and here's your state variable in your initial state and then it kind of gives you a little bit of statistics down here um, up here there are two file um, tabs the first file tab is the statistics tab this shows you the statistics that cover all you uh, generated while it was uh, creating the assertions for this particular design and it gives you a list of all the items on the page and how many there were and then it gives you an idea of how big the graph was that it created for this particular drawing uh, to process the assertions and then it gives you a list of all the types of assertions it created for the for this design it created one async uh, assertion uh, eight transition assertions two from each state which we would expect four sequences uh, sequences are defined as uh, starting at the reset state and ending at the reset state um, FSM loops uh, loops are defined as starting at the uh, reset state and going through a particular state twice with an intermediate state so for example you might go from count zero to count one to count two back to count one back to count two uh, that would be considered a loop and then holding terms is where it stays at the same state without an intermediate state in between so if it's in count one and it goes back to count one um, then that's a holding term um, the other file tab here is the actual assertions and we'll go through this and I'll kind of explain these assertions to you. So the first assertion is the reset assertion. Um, it's based on our reset value and it says it's got the overlap operator which means this is happening in the same clock cycle. And so you can see it's saying we have a reset condition that when the reset occurs we need to go to state count zero. Um, here is a state transition and this state transition is from count zero to count three we would expect that to occur when down is active and up is not and you can see here that um, here's the equation for that it says if you're state zero and you get up is not indicated but down is you're going to jump back to count three uh, likewise the, there's another transition from count zero to count one and that's going to be when up is active and we don't really care what down is because up has priority and so you can see that transition right here and then there are seven more uh, six more transitions in here from each of the other states um, one other interesting property here is the legal states property and this is in th this occurs only in system Verilog. Uh, this inside uh, property is only available in system Verilog, and it basically checks that there's no there's never a state that's not count zero count one count two or count three and then as we said before there are some sequences that cover all generates and here you can see the first sequence so a sequence being uh, starts at count zero goes to count three so it's going through the down path count three to count two count two to count one count one back to count zero so it's made the transition from count zero to count zero and that's considered a sequence by coverall um, here is another um, sequence here this is actually a loop property as you can see here it's, it has the loop keyword and here it goes from count zero to three three to two two to one and one back to two so that's a loop because it's going through state two um, two times without getting back to the count zero um, there are other loops in here I want to show you a, um, a holding term so you'll see uh, down here at the very bottom of the file uh, this is where the holding properties come in and as you would expect um, coverall detects that when you're in a state and not either up nor down is set that you're not going to go anywhere that you're going to stay in that state okay so you see these are the t all the type of assertions that cover all creates for FSMs so we've got an FSM but we don't have any outputs yet obviously we could use the state variable as an output but you know for the purpose of this demo I'm going to create an output diagram for you and in order to create an output diagram you need to open a new page and I'm going to call that demo underscore two. And now we need to put a logic diagram on here. And with all cover all logic diagrams, you need to start with a terminator and a reset state. So I'm going to go back to the original diagram. And basically, I'm going to grab this terminator and I'm going to put it on here. And I'm also going to go back and grab that title block that I had on there before. And I'm going to put that on here. And I'm going to edit a couple of things. I'm going to change this to demo 2 because I want a separate assertion 
profile, and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this option because I don't need any options on this particular diagram. Okay, so what we need to do is add a reset state, and that's why we opened our logic diagram uh, template. So I'm going to I'm going to call this template for the drawing, and I'm going to connect our terminator here. And for the purpose of this design, I want to create a combinational block for these outputs. So I'm not going to have a synchronous output. I'm just going to use the state variable and a combinational block to create my design. So the way you tell um, Coverall that you want to create a combinational block is you say, I want to use the overlap operator for this entire design. And what that's going to do is it's going to create assertions that happen in the same clock cycle. You still need a clock um, since assertions are required to be on the clock edge. But um, you're going to get all of these are going to be created with the overlap operator. And this is also going to tell Coverall when, they, when it generates the RTL to put this in a combinational block. So we're going to call this output count. And once again, you gotta um, you have to define the bit width. And because it's combinational, I'm going to set the reset state to X. And now we need to decide what, what it is we're going to do. So obviously our outputs are all based on the state. So we need to make four decisions based on our four states. And so I'm going to put down four decision blocks here, and then I'm going to show you how you make these decision blocks mutually exclusive because they're all going to contain the state variable. But as we know, the state variable can only have one state at a time, and so um, these these paths are all going to be mutually exclusive, and Coverall needs to know that. So we use what we call an extender, and we're going to label that at width 2 here. And so now I've placed an extender, and I need to take that straight out of the reset block. And now I'm going to hook each of my decisions to this extender block. And I'm going to put these down here at the top. Make them pass look a little better when we draw these dynamic connectors. Okay, so I'm going to draw dynamic connectors to each one of these decision blocks. And what this tells Coverall is to process all of these paths independently. In other words, they do not depend on one another. And if we didn't do that, we would get um, you know, equations like state is not equal to A or state is not equal to B and state is equal to C. And we don't really want that. We just want uh, state is equal to. So I'm going to start off here by saying state is equal to count zero. So if state is, is identically equal to count zero, then I want to go through this path. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to put that in each of these other blocks. I have to change that. Okay, so in this one, I'm going to change this to state one, count one. This one's going to count one, and this one will count two, and this one will count three. Okay, so now we have our four states, and now we need to, or our four decisions here based on the states, and now we need to, to tell Coverall what's going to happen to them when we go into each one of these states. So I'm going to do this first one. So count's going to go to to tick B zero zero. And to be honest with you, I could put any value I wanted in here as long as it was a two bit number, um, and that that would be the value of count when it's in state uh, count when state is in count zero. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing with so I'm going to copy these over one at a time. And we're going to have to go back and make sure these dynamic connectors are hooked up properly. You can tell them that the red box comes up there. Okay, so now we have our dynamic connectors connected up, and we need to tell Coverall that this is the yes path. In other words, can state is equal to count zero. Okay, so now we have um, our outputs defined, and now we have to some unique values here. And the last one here, obviously, will be 1, 1. Okay, so now we have a counter defined, and as we process through our state, we're going to get a count output. Um, the last thing we have to do on all coverall logic diagrams, they have to be closed loop systems. So we're going to have to add an aggregator here and connect it back to the reset block label that one. And then I'm going to place two more of these 
down here. Copy it and put it over here. And so now we have to um, add connections back so we get this closed loop process going here. And we also have to close the um, decision blocks and put the, the notepad in here. And so I'm going to add all of those connectors and then we'll go back and let this thing sit. Okay, so there's our completed diagram. We just have to go back and add the nodes in here so that each of our decision blocks has both a yes and a no path or cover all strings of plane. All right, so this is a, a logic diagram. Now, some things you, you see about this, it's all based on the state variable, as you'd expect. You can add more variables in each of these process blocks. Um, I could add another variable in here and, and basically have you know two variables coming out of my state machine. Or I could create another diagram and, and create the same logic. Um, then I'd end up with two combination of blocks in my RTL. So, you know, a lot of people prefer in their state machine organization to put all their uh, all of their outputs in a single block. And you can do that, and you can make these blocks as big as, as it takes to get all that data in there. Okay, so we could go process this now and um, see what kind of assertions we're going to get out of um, this second um, diagram that we've created. So we're going to pull the cover all back up here. Run it. Execute it's asking us. Okay, so now you can see here that um, Coverall has processed that. And the interesting thing is you have two pages now. That's our original page, and here's the second page. And it has um, some assertions on it. Uh, there's some typical statistics, but you can see it created um, uh, four new assertions and on this particular um, design. So there's Four assertions and four, four new path covers. And then down here at the bottom, there's some document statistics, which combines both uh, page one and page two here. Okay? And then in this, uh, in, in the assertion um, tab, you're going to see some new assertions. And these are for signal count, which we created over here. And as you can see in state, uh, count zero counts zero, uh, one, two, and three. And um, you have some path covers. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of the debug capability of, of Coverall here. One of the things you can do is you can grab um, this path and tell Coverall to find that diagram object. And it's going to um, show you this path right here through the um, logic diagram that it's actually flowing down through here to here. So it shows you that path. And then you can, um, let's bring Coverall back up here, you can grab one of these assertions here and you can grab that and tell you have it tell you which process block caused that assertion and it's this one right here. Um, the other thing you can do is um, you can switch drawings here and you can go um, back to you can go back to um, page one here if I did that right. Page two. Image one. Okay. And here you see that Coverall is switched over to um, page one. And now I can go find, for example, if I want to go find um, the uh, zero to one transition, I can double click on this one and tell it to find that diagram object. And you can see it shows me this transition here where we go from uh, count zero through the up path over here to uh, count one. So you can use this to debug your um, design. Um, the last thing now we need to do to complete this design is basically create an RTL module. And so what we need to do is we have to add a third page here. And I'm going to call this one FSM underscore demo underscore IO. Let's get rid of that underscore. FSM demo IO. So on this page, what you want to do is create a top-level module so that Coverall knows um, what the, what the module is going to look like from an RTL standpoint. And you do that by first adding a title page as always. And in this title page, you need to use the keyword BD, which indicates a block diagram. And then the file name, um, FSM demo. And then um, RTL, oops, RTL file is the same, would be uh, FSM demo. 
okay we don't need any special options here for this but what we do need to do is we need to place a block diagram and some IO connector so we can tell um, cover all how how to hook, how this block hooks up in the real world so we need to add um, five signals here a clock a reset uh, our up and down signals and then we need to have an output which in this case is going to be a count so I'm going to add count here we need to sh on outputs and inputs you need to indicate the bit width so the coverall knows which signal you're actually hooking up to there and down okay so now we have our module defined and I'm going to go ahead and change this name to FSM demo okay we have our module defined and now we can go back to coverall and generate some RTL so let's pop coverall back up here now we can flip these switches right here and we're going to create RTL by module like test bench and some formal scripts the RTL is going to be written in system Verilog the test bench templates are going to be written in system Verilog and the formal in formal is going to be um, targeted to the mentor zero win tool so let's go ahead and run that again the cover all tells me he's going to overwrite now you're going to get this second overwrite because I've run this before again to generate the RTL and it and it's telling me that I'm going to overwrite these files over here. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do that. And as you see, Coverall is going to bring up a series of tabs with um, the, you know our our typical stat, uh, statistics assertion. But now it's it's given us an RTL file, and you can see from this RTL file that it's you know it's it's got the IOs that we showed it. It's got a state variable and a next state variable, and it used the the, the, the typical state machine where you have a state and then the next state um, this is the synchronous block here's the asynchronous block uh, our combinational block um, here you see you got the next state variable and then you have your case based on state and then you go through each of your transitions as defined in your flow chart and then here at the bottom you have your output um, combinational block which says here's what the outputs are in those states that's a very typical state machine uh, structure um, Coverall's also created this test bench, um, and it's labeled the, the the device under test FSM demo as U zero. It's created a bind module so we can bind our assertions to this module. Um, it's called that BAFSM FSM demo, and it's U one. And then it's also created a clock generator for you and a, an initial reset block here um, based on the reset pin. Then down here on the bottom, you can see line 38 through 40. There's this comment indicating that this file was generated by Coverall and that you're not to modify anything above this line. Anything below the line, 41 on down, you're free to change and put your test bench code in here, and Coverall won't modify that if you go back and make changes later. So the final file here is a bind module, and you can see it's created this module all. All signals in the assertions are now inputs, and it's added the two assertion files here. So now you're ready to uh, take this design into your simulator and and test it. And that concludes our demo. Thanks for watching. In the previous demo, I forgot to show you how to add parameters to a, an RTL file. And for this state machine diagram, we have four parameters that we've defined, and we need to tell um, the RTL what those values are. And there's two ways to do that. One way you can add a, uh, a parameter file to this drawing, or you can use the uh, system Verilog local param. And the way we would do that is we would um, place this uh, append RTL start macro and what it, what this macro does is it will append whatever text that I put into this box at the beginning of the RTL file so I'm going to go ahead and define the local parameters here using the local param oops, I've got to get more space there so using the local param keyword we can go ahead and define our four parameters
Okay, now we've defined these parameters, we can go back and rerun coverall. I'll bring coverall up here. Run it. And we can go ahead and reprocess the RTL. And here you see that the local param statement has been added here and we now have a parameter.